Carl Zaw on the Great Wall. Alex, what up, man? Finally, we meet. This is amazing. Okay, guys, I hope you can hear us there. We're live. We have the lovely Yulia working in the camera group today for we, us. We are on the Great Wall of China. And I think 5G is working well out here. Yes. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> you're probably asking why I'm in a suit and why you're in your, I would say your, um, what are we going to call it? The statement? What, what, is this This your, is a is... multi-polarity shirt because this is a, <laughs> this is a traditional in, uh, Indonesian batik shirt. But this is a Belt and Road Forum in Beijing. And here I am representing all facets of culture. You know, we, we are both men of culture here. Yes, we're we are. well-traveled. Sure. And here we are traveled to the Great Wall of China. And if you guys see in the distance there, Carl and I were just doing some uh, interviews with RT Television. We have a break. We thought, hey, why not do a live stream from the Great Wall of China? Fantastic. And that's what we're doing. So for our audience, if you're not familiar with Carl, I'm going to leave the links in the description below. This is a guy, I call him the walking encyclopedia. Thank Pretty you. good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bad, huh? <laughs> it's funny because uh, let, let's chat about what happened, how we, we got here. I mean, I messaged you because I, I was like, oh, man. I got to meet you eventually. Uh, let's do a live stream together. And you're like, hey, man, I'm on my way to Beijing. I'm like, well, I'm in Beijing. And then it's like, well, I'm on the wall. And you're like, I'm, I'm on the wall. <laughs> I'm on the wall. So the next thing you know, we're here. Yeah. Um, Carl, tell me, I mean, I call you the walking and talking encyclopedia. Thank you. Thank you. Let's tell these viewers really about where we are. I mean, this is amazing. This, this, like, if you have never seen this, guys, it truly is a great wall. <laughs> it truly is a great wall. Uh, so the, here we are on the Min Dynasty Great Wall that was rebuilt in the 15, 15 between 1560 and 1580s. Uh, so th there has always been different great, wa great walls in the northern border of China, starting from 2,000 years ago in the Warring States period, and then. Han Dynasty, but by Ming Dynasty, uh, the start of Ming Dynasty, they start building around the wall around Beijing because Beijing became the capital. And Beijing being very close to the Mongolian steppe, uh, they need a defense uh, network to fortify the defenses around the capital. But um, the wall that was built in the early Ming Dynasty was actually quite short. You know, there's not, nothing like the imposing structure we see right now. And so in, in 1550. Oh, that's okay. Let's just uh, continue to get it back there, guys. But maybe Here we, we go. Refer. That's okay. No, yeah. that's good. Yeah. You good? All right. So in, no worries. A little bit of wind up here, guys. So sometimes our camera drops out. So some of you may have been aware of like the Mongol conquest, for example, you know, when Pax Mongolica covered most of Eurasia, you know, China, Russia, Persia was all part of it. But by the 1300s, uh, the, the Mongol empire was on the decline and the Ming dynasty rose to overthrow the Mongol overlord back to the, the Mongolian steppe. And, but the Mongol power still remained in Mongolia. So th th there's a, in, in 1550, uh, when the uh, future general Qi Jiguang went to the capital Beijing to take the imperial civil service exam to become a Mandarin, there, the Mongols broke through this part of the mountain and they raided as far as the suburbs of Beijing. So this Mongol raid left a deep impression under the young 20-year-old Qi Jiguang in the capital taking his test. And he eventually became a general. He was assigned to the southeast coast of China, fighting the Japanese pirates that was plaguing the Chinese coast. And he became a very famous general. He invented several style of martial arts. He created a Chinese weapon called Miao Dao, which is based on the Japanese Nodachi, which is this really wicked long uh, blade. And, 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 and he created an entire martial art on how to wield this, this, this giant sword that's almost as tall as me. And uh, after his success against the Japanese pirates, he was promoted and made a governor 
of this, all this district around here. And he made an assessment of the wall. He said, this, this wall is too short, too small. It's not going to be able to stop a serious Mongol raid. So he made a petition to then Chinese Prime Minister Zhang Juizhen. He said, you got to give me money and cash so I can build truly a great wall. And the wish was granted, and by 1567, mm -hmm. the reconstruction started. And, and this is what you see all around here. There's a great wall stretches all, all over the distance, just forever and ever. So this, this, this section of the wall from here to Beijing and all the way in, uh, east to the sea was rebuilt by General Qi Guang starting from 1567. Mm -hmm when he was the governor of this place. And, and it was built with bricks and motors and it's, what can I say, it's truly a great wall. Amazing stuff, I mean, you know, I've done a little bit of my research, not as heavy as you, okay. But over, I believe, 21,000 kilometers of combined wall, if you and I were to walk, and I saw you walking earlier today, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I got a workout. <laughs> I got a go. workout. So it's about, it would take you about 18 months, they said, to walk the whole thing. I if mean, you are it, very fit, yes. Yeah, so me, uh, about a year, right? No problem, <laughs> no problem. But let's, Carl, let's, since we're on this iconic wall, let's talk about some other things that I think, uh, you know, are important moving forward. And maybe you can share some things with our viewers about you and, you know, where you are as a Chinese. Are you in China? Are you living outside of China? What is life like with you? I mean, I've followed you for a couple of years. And I've followed, you're very big on Twitter, man. I He's follow you for a couple of years. I follow Alex because I was, uh, so I was born and raised in the cities of Chongqing in southwestern China. And I'm always hungry for content of my <laughs> homeland because I moved away from Chongqing when I was 13 years old. I moved to United States to join my parents. And I live in US for about almost 30 years. So I'm always hungry for content about <laughs> Chongqing, what's going on. So one day I go on YouTube, I, I find this video was recommended to me. Really? The okay, biggest <laughs> mega city in China you never know. I'm like, huh, what could this be? I click on, <laughs> and it's a video about Chongqing, and this Canadian guy was like, oh my god, this is so amazing. This is Chongqing. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, and I was like, this guy is fun, you know, engaging, and he's like, have very excited in my hometown. So of I course, started, it's a I, great city. Yeah, I started to follow him, and then right around the pandemic, uh, uh, around 2021, yeah. uh, was it 2021? Yeah, well, yeah, 2021. Yeah, yeah, and then you said you are moving to China. I'm like, this guy's crazy. This is <laughs> this guy is crazy moving to China in the midst of pandemic. And he did the whole video how, how he went through the quarantine process. Uh, I'm like, okay, this guy is either crazy or just really dedicated. But no matter what, I'm gonna follow his story because very interesting. And he has a, a very great YouTube channel called Reportify Media. And I'm just hearing beeping sounds. Uh, Julia, are we still recording? Good? Awesome. Okay, Carl, I mean, where are these people coming? I mean, this is a wall that's 21,000 kilometers. Where are all these people coming? And they're in damn good shape. I mean, where are all these people coming <laughs> from? Never dude? underestimate Chinese aunties and uncles, oh, let me tell you. Hi there. Uh, uh, because today, <laughs> earlier, I was climbing the wall and they're at, at a place where the, the wall was so steep, I almost gave up. And then, then these Chinese uncles and aunties just blew, blew past me. So I. You know, I a um, lot of respect, a lot of respect. So, I mean, Carl, are you still in China? Well, right now I am. Yeah, I am <laughs> back right, in my we're, motherland. We're, we're going to go down that road. Okay, no problem. So, I mean, when was the last time you were in Chongqing? I was in Chongqing, oh my God, I was in Chongqing in 2002. So 20, That's 20 years so what ago. Do you, what do you think has happened <laughs> in the last 22 years in Chongqing? Uh, a lot, a lot. Because I, I, I'll tell you, when I, I grew up in China in 1980s, you know, I, I look. I, I look younger than my age. Uh, I was actually <laughs> born in 1976, one month after Mao died. So I grew up mm. in China the entire 1980s. At that time, I can tell you the tallest structure in Chongqing was this uh, liberation monument yeah, in the center of the town. It's about three story tall. That's the tallest building in Chongqing. Now you can update us what happened. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so the Chongqing has the largest 
Well, one of the largest buildings coming up now is called the Chongqing 100. Mm. I went up that thing on an elevator on the outside of the building. Wouldn't suggest anybody do that, but that's, I mean, it's really coming into being a, you know, for Chinese, uh, a very, very traveled domestic city. I think it is, if it's not, I'm told, maybe this is a rumor, that it is the number one uh, tra most traveled city in China. It's called the Wanghong Chengsi, or literally Internet Celebrity City in China. I never imagined that would be a thing when I was a, a you know, like a, like a teenager back in this, this is outstanding camera work, I gotta say, by my <laughs> wife, because this wall is not easy. I mean, it's not, it's just, not. The, you get maybe 20 meters of this, oh, and then it's just down. Like, I mean, look at this. You know what I think of this every time I see this in the background? I think of somebody, one of my grandparents or something, buying me a puzzle at Christmas time saying, there you go, put it together. And you see this image and you just think, this is history. It kind of is a bit chilling it when you is. look at it. Like you think, is that real? And then it... You, I don't know if you guys you, can see that. You know, but, uh, when I, um, uh, on the drive from Beijing airport to here, I actually thought this whole drive looked very scenic, almost like driving in California, mm -hmm. until the Great Wall started popping up on top of the mountain. Then you see it, it's, it's going all the way, it's snaking all the way. Yeah. Oh man, and, this is unbelievable. And, and this, uh, this, this, I mean, it, it is truly a Great Wall. I, I, I'm. Wow, we're gonna look at it from a cam camera angle here too. Very nice, very nice. Uh, so Carl, what's, tell me, we had the discussion about your channel. Yes. We talked about my channel. I mean, you're gonna help me on Twitter because I'm nothing on Twitter. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna help you uh, work with you. I shouldn't, don't wanna say we're help with you. I'm gonna collaborate with you because you're a fascinating guy to talk about China, of course, with, but then other geopolitical things, I mean, you know, we, talk, we spoke about friends yesterday. Yes. Meeting friends in this world and what mm -hmm. are friends and stuff like that. I mean, to me, it's, it's quite uh, difficult in geopolitical times uh, to agree with friends now. Because sure. we're in a very split world right now. Yes. And what's going on today, of course, this morning, uh, some more uh, adventures in the Middle East here. Yeah. It's only going to get more divided. And uh, I mean... Do most of your friends that you know you chum around with or communicate with are they into geopolitics? Or are they completely different? So I, I I live in U.S. for thirty years and I live very compartmentalized lives. You know I I also have very compartmentalized friends. You know I have surf buddies. Okay. I have salsa dancing friends. I have uh, and I have friends I can talk geopolitics with, like okay. you, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, let's let's take it another step. So, when you uh, moved, or let's say you're, are you currently in the U.S. right now? Or, no, or no. So secret location. <laughs> or is it, uh, so in in 2019, just before the pandemic, I decided to do a China trip, and I was in China for three months. But then I got cabin fever because I didn't surf for three months. And I, Where were you staying in China? I, I went all over. I went to Yunnan on and the boat. you didn't go to your hometown? I, oh, no, no, no. Oh, I'm my, so sorry. I did go to my hometown in 2019, of course. Okay, here so, so okay, four yeah. and a half. So <laughs> the last time I was in Chongqing was four and a half years ago. Oh, okay. Good catch. Okay. Good catch. So I, I visited my auntie, but then I went down to Yunnan uh, on the border with Myanmar. My yeah. friend was teaching English there. He told me China's largest water festival or mm. uh, is there, or, or Songkran. It's the same festival as the Songkran in Thailand, Thailand uh, because the Thai ethnic uh, group living there, mm. they have a very similar culture with the Thais. And so I, I went there, uh, it was had a great time. Mm -hmm. And then my dad came to visit, so I spent time with my dad, but I didn't surf for three months. So I, I was getting cabin fever. So I booked a trip uh, for like a, maybe a one month tour mm -hmm. in, in Bali. And then uh, I love it so much. Be before I went to Bali, my friend, my surf buddy back in California actually told me, he said, Carl, if you love to surf, go to Bali. There's only one problem. If you go to Bali, you don't want to come back. Okay, so he there was, it is. Huh? He was right, he was right. I, 
I haven't left. I haven't left. Well, I did leave, but I, <laughs> I, I basically put down my roots in Bali now. I'm married. I have a kids. Okay. I built my house on the beach of Bali. Do your viewers know this, or is this like this exclusive interview I'm getting? <laughs> do they know all this stuff? I don't know. I don't I know. Mean, I... You don't have to say everything, but I mean... <laughs> Do they know all this? Uh, maybe some of them know. Okay, Maybe well now you know. Yes. <laughs> Tell us what's his channel all about. Yeah, we're going to oh, get to that. We're going to get to that. So what, you just called the channel after you? Yeah, Carl Za, Carl Za so, channel. That's a bit bold. I, I like to build my brand. <laughs> <laughs> I am bold. I am bold. <laughs> that's good. So when did you start your channel? Um, so I started my channel... <sighs> Maybe around when I, when I started, uh, like Bali, when I moved to Bali. So, okay. so a little bit after the pandemic, cause that's when, when I started. But I, before I wasn't. Yep. We're just going to fix the camera, guys. One second here. All right, we're but, back. But before I wasn't really uh, like serious about growing my YouTube channel because right. I was using YouTube more as like advertisement for my podcast, mm -hmm. the Silk and Steel podcast, right, which okay. is everything about China because this is what is my passion. China is my passion. I love to talk about China, history, culture, politics. And I would put the free content of my podcast that's not on Patreon, on YouTube. Ah. Yeah, but but so my, my YouTube w was kind of growing very slow uh, until my trip to Moscow uh, right. earlier this year in June, just in time for the Prigozhin tr uh, coup. Did we do a live stream together on that? Yes, we did. Did we do a live stream together <laughs> yes, on that? Yes, we did. And, uh, That's great. Yeah, it's still on your channel, I believe. Yes, it yeah. is, of course. Yeah. Reporterfy Media. Reporterfy Media, yeah. yeah. So we... Uh, after I came back from Russia, that's when I start devoting more time uh, to YouTube, talking about geopolitics, uh, sharing my views on particularly China, and, and that's when I see I'm gaining some traction. So this is what I'm trying to concentrate my effort on right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to get Yulia to pan the camera and just take in what we're taking in right now here. This is pretty amazing stuff when you think about it. It's quite beautiful. Let's take another level down here and uh, just walk. And you can even see all the the hills as, as Yulia was saying earlier maybe we'll get Yulia on the camera I don't know if she's gonna come on the camera the oh come on you 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 know but Yulia was saying that uh, every day you come up here it's a different palette because the trees are changing color yes uh, the seasons are, are, are changing here so it looks like a diff something new and different every day yeah. to me it's like a brand new painting every day it's yeah. absolutely even stunning. with different lighting when the different clouds of you know covering the sun it's a it's just a, and and look there's a there's rt studios setting up all, all along the wall you is that see them? the words the light is reflecting yeah so they're all the way out there. So did you guys climb? You, you didn't go out there, did way you? Went no the way. way we went There's all no the way. We went all the way this morning. It took us like an hour and a okay half there? to walk over there. It's balanced? Okay, we'll just uh, fix it again. Did it go out of balance? Oh, look, all right. doggy. Come. So you just press this here. And we'll just press that there. And it should be fine. It should balance. Okay. Wow, even a, that's oh, the yeah, first dog I've seen on the Great Wall. <laughs> <laughs> the first dog I've seen on the Great Wall. Okay. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So we're at the 20 minute mark here right now. Um, Okay, Carl, I got a, now, now that I got Mr. Encyclopedia all in one shot here. Okay, I'm here. Okay, so these walls, they're built almost like a fortress, right? Yes. Is this where people would be sitting in the, you know, when the barbarians were at the gate? Okay, right, right here, right, right here. These holes you see right here. Yeah. Uh, this is where they will drop cylindrical bombs. Jesus. Uh, and or or that just, sounds lethal. Yeah, you well, know, that's the point. You want to kill your enemies. <laughs> and and so so this side, this side right here is actually the north. So this is where the the Mongol hordes will come. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, so so this is back back then. If you have the proper manpower and proper stockpiles of weapons, you can hold this wall against pretty you know massive assault. Uh, and that was the idea. And every day they'd have to come in here and climb up and down these things. <laughs> yeah? So so actually, the Ming Dynasty general Qi Ji Guang settled about tens of thousands soldiers settlers all along villages along the Great Wall. 
so their, their idea is to settle this land and also to defend it. So a lot of the locals today, they're actually descended from the Ming Dynasty uh, soldier farmers that were, that were uh, moved here. You know, so now this, the, you know, that security guard over there on the, on the wall, mm -hmm. his ancestor was probably one of the soldiers stationed here. It's amazing. Yeah. But what do you think, uh, like if we look at, uh, if we can bring the camera over here, maybe right where I'm standing, I mean, you see these mountain peaks there. Wouldn't that be enough to, you know, see the enemy coming over those peaks uh, and be able to prepare for it? I mean... Okay, so, so that's why you see there's a tower. There was a watchtower over there that provide advanced warning. Yep. And you, can, you see this series of to watchtowers on the Great Wall. What they, would, that what they do is when they spot the enemy, when they spot a, a potential danger, uh, a potential breach of the Great Wall, they will light up fire at night. And wait, wait, wait. no problem. I'm going to continue to film Carl, and Yulia's going to take a call for you. Okay. So this series of towers, any kind of emergency, any like danger to the wall, yep. the they will light up smoke signals, and and then each successful tower will, will light up smoke signals. So the smoke signals will spread very fast. That's, these are communication towers, and and the the the, the the emergency smoke signal will spread very fast, and neither will light up fires. So, Carl. Okay, okay Mr. Encyclopedia here. I've okay. got the camera, and uh, I'm gonna. I'm passing this mic on to Yulia for a second. She's gonna say hello, and uh, I'm gonna film you guys coming back. We're gonna head back. Talk about heading back to uh, what Carl's got to do now. Yes, Carl. You're Carl is needed. So, hi everyone. I'm coordinating here the. <laughs> Our coordinator, Yulia. Yes, events coordinator <laughs> and uh, fitness and instructor. We've been hiking this morning. Carl did very well. Thank you. I was actually huffing and puffing, and she just blew right past me. I was, I was on my all fours climbing these walls. Well, we've done this trail a few times, but yeah. I think the longer you climb, the better you get it. <laughs> yeah, she said she, she gained her, her uh, legs at the Chongqing. You know, because Chongqing is a mountain city, you have to go up and down. And, and As I, I said, the Great Wall and Chongqing has many steps in common, so... <laughs> so steps is nothing new for Chongqing people, but... You've been out of the city for a while. I, I'm out of shape. I'm out of shape. I have since my birth of my Chung, son. Chongqing people are very fit, so I think... Uh, <laughs> these steps well, is nothing for the locals. Yeah, I gotta get back in touch with my roots. Okay, guys, well, let's, let's wrap up the show here. Let's say our yeah. goodbyes right about here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has been fantastic. What yeah. an opportunity to have the live stream with Carl Zaw on the Great Wall of China. I can't get any better than that. Can't get any more expensive yeah. than that. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, guys, that's it from here, us here on the Great Wall of China here. You guys have a fantastic time. Don't forget to subscribe to this guy's channel, okay? And his. And we'll play, we'll play this on both of our channels so you yep. guys will get to know us. Yeah. We'll talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.